Sounds good. Sounds good. Here we go. <clears throat> you know what it is. It's the Secretary of Funk back on deck. Back on deck. Let me check my time. Only have like 20 minutes before my camera cuts off. I don't want to make this a long video, so. Uh, where you guys been, man? I've been checking YouTube, waiting for you to make a video. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Secretary Funk back on deck. Feels good. I've been away for a while for very good reasons. Um, life comes at you fast. I started making these videos a long time ago. I was in my 20s, late 20s, but I was in my 20s. I am now 40. And we'll be 41 this year. Time has escaped. My phone hasn't made noise all evening. So anyway, as you can see, I'm back in my album room. My old videos were always, I was still facing this way. However, this room used to, all the walls used to be covered in, in, in vinyl. And now... I only have this and this because behind the camera is a dog cage, is a play kitchen, a doll house that sits above four feet off the ground, five feet off the ground, and a huge indoor trampoline. So this is all that I've been left with. That was the main reason why I stopped making videos. It's because I had kids, small children, that needed a lot of attention. But now they're older, they play by themselves. And, 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 and coronavirus, this COVID-19, has given me a lot of time in the house. And a lot of time back. Uh, which is a good thing. Outside of my house, people are dying. That's bad. That's terrible. But I have uh, gotten back a lot of my life and gotten a lot of things in order, including my stereo equipment, which leads me to the other reason why I stopped making videos is because I was doing some work on my house and I sent a massive surge to my album room. It blew out the lights. It blew out my old amp. It destroyed my old Pioneer turntable. Um, it didn't blow out the record cleaner. But everything was destroyed. And so, you know, that was just kind of the last kick in the ass that really, really put me down for the count. And I kind of stopped collecting, too. I haven't spun a record in probably five years. Um, I still bought records. Um, and I actually sold a few. Only one of which I regret selling. Um which I never thought I would do because I didn't really sell records out of my collection. But, you know, I did hit a bump in the road where I just needed a couple of dollars. And, and I did, so I offloaded them. <clears throat> offloaded a few. Uh, it's kind of hard to get one back. The Roy Brooks I sold. That's the one that I will be getting back. But anyway, I wanted to come on and I wanted to start making videos again. Um, a weekly thing. I want to start making videos again on the weekly. The main reason why I stopped making videos, what got me, to, what kind of took the wind out of my sails initially, were the YouTube copyright um, warnings or strikes that I was getting for old videos. <clears throat> I didn't appreciate that. And then I started looking at Derek's videos. I never stopped looking at you all's videos. Every once in a while I would comment and I started noticing that you know, wait a minute, um, we can't even make the content like we want to. At least I can't like I want to. I want to do needle drops. I will be doing needle drops. I have a couple of ideas of how I'm going to come back. Uh, my first method is to research the music that I want to needle drop first. Um, because I think that there's a difference between... A video that's already been on YouTube for a while and then gets a copyright strike versus one that's kind of newish. So I researched 
the videos to see if other users have them on YouTube and to see how old those videos are. If they're pretty old, then I know maybe I'm safe with doing a needle drop. Um, also, you know, YouTube has this thing, topics, and I noticed that they annotate or attribute the music in those topic uh, playlists and I heard that you could copy those credits and put those in the footer of your video and that music somehow is in their YouTube database and as long as you credit it properly which could be a simple cut and paste then you should be safe all of those other things like common music or whatever it's called common sharing and first right to use or all of that stuff is it's just too too uh, ambiguous and i think that you could get handed your ass if you're going to try to interpolate interpolate interpret interpret copyright law which is actually kind of funny because i work for the united states patent and trademark office you would think there would be somebody in there that i could talk to that could hold it down but anyway let's get into some music um, I'm still researching some albums that I wanted to show, so I'm not going to show those. I'm not going to even get in too deep, um, start dropping nuggets just yet. What I will do is I will show a couple of, uh, albums that I bought recently, um, things that I'm currently spinning. And as we speak right now, as I'm speaking to the camera right now, I probably have like, uh, maybe like 20, 25 albums on the way in the mail coming from all over the world and i can't wait to share those with you as well so let me start showing you albums that i have uh purchased so recently i purchased michael kiwanuka's most recent album uh produced by danger mouse danger mouse actually produced his this is his third album danger mouse produced his second album as well and I don't have the first or the second. I don't want them. But when I heard this, I was like, okay. This man, the guitarist, he's a guitarist by nature, a session guitarist by trade. Uh, he's doing something different on this album <clears throat> than he does on his previous two albums. He relied on him being a singer or try to come out really, really being a singer, which he is a fine singer. However, on this album, the music does the talking. And what I mean by that is, on his second album, uh, to me, I could not stand the vocals. Because whatever feelings or expression he was trying to get or portray from his music, he was letting his vocals do it. And to me, he just doesn't have it. But on this album, he lets the music do it. He plugged his guitar in to a to something that's giving him distortion and fuzz and, and uh, I think this is uh, this album is genre in in uh, indie rock which I can see that there's a lot of psychedelic moments on this this almost reminds me of like uh, those old school albums that just seem complete um, there's a lot of elements those ghostly background vocals and big wall of sound um, almost sounds like an orchestra sometimes like uh it reminds me of the album that john Coltrane, chris up in chicago gave me the mini ripperton album come to my garden this sounds like that a lot so imagine that with fuzzed out guitar at times and and and, and very very uh clear vocals he just got it right he just got it right on this album, so I definitely purchased that one. I'm not going to show this one. I'm going to save this for later. I want to show this album. Oh, let me show this first. This is another album. I bought this when it came out. This is the Childish Gambino, uh, Awaken My Love. Um, kind of channeled the P-Funk era, George Clinton, I would say, a lot in this. But boy, super talented, man. And... and I got that deluxe version. I actually thought that this was, I don't know how much this goes for now, but I had to get the, the little box set that comes with the 3D glasses. I'm not gonna take this little, oh, well. Yeah, I'm, it's too hard to get off and I feel like I'm gonna ruin it if I take it off. But I, yeah, anybody familiar with this album knows what it is. 
you don't have it on vinyl, I would suggest that you do get it on vinyl because it sounds so much better on vinyl. There's a lot of things that I'm hearing on this album that you just, I'm not hearing with the best AirPods or what have you. So that brings me to this album. This is a gentleman, Timu. Timu has a YouTube channel, little independent artist channeling that old school funk sound. This is Relic of the Mothership by Timu. This came out this year. And this, I mean, I'm sorry, this came out last year. Um, dope album. Really, really, it doesn't even seem like he's trying to make old music. To me, this is a continuation of that old P-Funk, straight up West Coast funk sound. This is on a label, uh, the Sleepers Records, Sleepers with a Z. And that whole label does the same thing you have. It's full of acts. Got him. Uh, one that comes to mind is the Apex or the APX, which is a husband and wife duo um, group. They're doing the old school P-Funk, R&B. And like I said, they're keeping it alive. They're not paying homage. And they're not, uh, uh, um, you know, they're not... Just kind of like you know, like when I about six or seven years ago, you had all of those brass horn bands um, on Daptone Records, and then it just seemed like you just had endless bands playing that same funk, and it just got really old because it it just didn't seem authentic. It sounded good, but there was just something missing. Um, th this record label that's doing this music um, does not miss the mark, and I will say something about this. That goes also to the YouTube copyright stuff. If you want to check this album out, because I can't needle drop it, I'm scared to. The whole discography for that label, Sleepers Records, is on uh, Bandcamp. If you go to purchase this, if you listen and you go to purchase this, in that set, on that little box where you enter in the price that you want to pay, there's also a green button, I believe, that says add a comment or add... I, I would I think that it's a good idea not just for me but for any of the YouTube vinyl community content creators if you see an album and you want to buy it and especially if it's off Bandcamp or any website preferably directly from the artist I think that we should be leaving comments that you saw this on YouTube and give that person's YouTube channel not to give them a shout out but to start to give the industry a clear message that our videos are resulting in sales for them and we should not be getting dinged for copyright for just doing small needle drops especially because most of us our videos are not even monetized so i'll leave it at that these records all the records on this label are limited press this one is a 500 i have a and as of right now, there's 46 remaining out of 500. There's an album that I can't find that sold out um, another artist on this label. His name is Butter. Man, you talk about like some Zap and Roger sounding stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy song. What else have I been listening to? Oh, I got this. This is J.I.D., rapper from Atlanta. I had to hop on this album, first of all, because it's great. He's on J. Cole's Dreamville label. Um, shout out. He's probably one of my favorite rappers of this new school era. J.I.D. doesn't belong to my era. I'm 40 years old. He belongs to my nephew's era, who's a freshman in high school now. He's the one who told me about J.I.D. a while ago. J.I.D.'s first album, The Never Story, is literally selling for like, three hundred and fifty dollars now and it just came out in 2018 so kind of speaks to itself about how great you know or how the masses are recognizing this that man's skills let me see uh, what else did i get in the mail got this a while ago i saw esperanza spalding when she dropped her last project 12 little spells she had an opportunity for people for 50 people to buy her test pressing and have it autographed it was expensive, but it was worth it. This is 9 out of 50, autographed by 
per uh, Esperanza herself. It's a double LP. Came with a ton of stuff. Um, slip mats, stickers, digital downloads, and the regular album. I have it. Where is it? I have the regular. I didn't even know I was going to get the regular album. Let's see. Ah, screw it. I'm not going to mess with it, but anyway. Wanted to show this also. Hiatus Coyote. Band from Australia. Dope, dope album. Wait a minute. Sorry. When I hear one of my kids coming downstairs, I know I don't have long. So anyway, Hiatus Coyote. This is my favorite album right now. This was my favorite album of 2015. I loved it when I heard it. Just now I'm buying it on vinyl. Got it about a couple of weeks ago. Been spinning it heavy, heavy. I heard Derek um, explaining or trying to describe an album saying it was building, it's swelling. And I mean, in, in this album, all the songs are just... They're just journeys, man. Um, and then the lead singer, uh, Napalm. Uh, there's, I don't know even what to say about her talent. If anybody does not have this album, shame on you if you haven't heard about it. Uh, I, I listed it in, in the Facebook group, and a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, a few people say that they, that they have it and that they saw them live, and that you know. If these folks come anywhere near DC, I'll definitely be seeing them. So now, I have one more album to show, which I'm going to needle drop, by the way. <clears throat> but I need to see how much time I have left. Let's see. Oh, two minutes. Two minutes, that's just enough. So, I got a, I got a relic, I got a grail. A long time ago, back in 99, when I first started, um, First started collecting records. I saw a blog, and it had this record on it. Roy Ayers Ubiquity Live at the Montreal Jazz Festival. It was pressed on Polydor Records. Let me take all this stuff out so you, I can show you guys. I don't know how limited pressing this is. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I hear it's pretty rare. Um, but that's it. I just got this in today. And I thank God for the seller. I'm going to give him a credit on my um, on my uh, Instagram channel. But I wanted to needle drop this because this album gets psyched out at times. I mean, I, it kind of almost sounds like stark reality uh, with the distorted vibes. And I wanted to play it. Let me see if I can needle drop it right where I want you to hear it. Right there. You hear that? I'll just end on this note. It feels good to be back. I'm going to make a lot more videos. Um, the first week I'm probably going to make about two or three. And then one every week. But this is a grill. Let me not push it. But anyway, people. I'll come back in another video. Show you more that I've... Uh, gotten in the mail recently and um you know i'm back on deck and i'll holler at you guys later <laughs>